Okay, so to plot any graph, we need to go into y equals. And as I mentioned, we're going to do a quadratic. This is the quickest way to get the x, although you can use alpha x in green here. But it's much quicker just to use the button next to alpha. And in this case, let me just go um, any quadratic. It doesn't really matter. Make sure we use minus, not the negative button. And then let's press graph. So that's all done. Press graph. Ah, it's not there. Why is that? Well, the reason is that the window is in the wrong place. We can see that we have the window set in a completely different position. So the, the regular window that we'd have set is zoom standard, which is number six. And that will give us a negative 10 to 10 in both directions window. And we can see now it's going to give us this graph. Just bear in mind, though, that this is a rectangular window and not a square window. So if we wanted to look at things uh, in real sort of um, shape, then we would go zoom square. Um, that's very important if you're using circles especially, because if not, uh, it will look like a stretched uh, circle, which will look like an oval, a uh, footy ball for some of us and not for others. Now let's say that this quadratic is taken from an exam question, um, and the window that they set in the exam is, let's say, minus 5 to 5 in every direction, and from, say, 0 to 10. We can change that here, and then we're going to see that it will convert the graph a bit differently. Um, and we can add grid lines if we wanted to. If there was key points where we were trying to plot it like in a question, we can add grid lines. To do that, we go into Format, and we can see here that there's many different options, and then we're going to add grid lines. That's the color of the grid line, and that's fine for me. And we can see now that we have these beautiful grid lines, and we could actually plot it really nicely if we needed to off that there. And these grid lines are controlled by the X and Y scale. If I change that Y scale to, say, 2, then it will give me a bar every two rather than every one. Okay, so just bear in mind that the X scale and Y scale control the grid lines. So some of you may like these grid lines, but maybe only in certain situations. There's also grid dot that you may um, also find useful at times, um, but other times you may say, no, I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna leave the grids off. So what are we gonna do look at now? We're gonna look at a trig graph. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to choose a simple one, and that is sine x. I can close the brackets, I don't need to, but I will just make it look pretty. And if we press graph now, you can see, see it bouncing along the bottom here. Uh, but again, I will need to adjust that window. Um, I, I will just show you a little nice little feature though of this, um, because we've got this window setting already done. And that's what, what we can do is go into zoom, go across to mem at the top here, or memory, and we can store that window setting that we currently use. Don't forget that was negative five to five and zero to 10. And we can store that uh, window setting. So now let's go back into zoom, go back to standard. And we really we want to focus on the trig one. We could get rid of this uh, quadratic by pressing clear. If we come across the equals and press enter, we'll notice that the equals doesn't have uh, a black rectangle around it now, which means that it won't graph it. And I'm also lucky that I'm already in radians mode. A uh, Lots of times uh, when you're graphing stuff uh, for trig, you may already be in degrees mode, and therefore it just doesn't look right. Something's wrong, and that's because of the mode that you're in. So make sure for lots of the trig stuff that you're doing that you're in radians mode. And we're likely to want to change that window to be in relation to pi. So in this case, I'm going to go 0 to 2 pi. And I quite like having my scale going up by pi on 2. You could do pi on 3 or pi on 4, but I'm just going to do half pi. And we know really that it ranges between negative 1 and 1, so let's keep it really tight to that as well. And we can see now that we get this beautiful sine curve between those exact bounds that I want. And we can adjust that accordingly. Notice that if I now go back into zoom, go across the memory and go to either previous, if it's obviously the previous one, or recall, it will then bring it back to that window that we had earlier that I've stored. So that's really useful if you want to keep on going back to certain windows, um, that you can have that one stored as a particular one on your calculator. So hopefully you found that useful, and thank you very much for watching.